Um, while I've been teaching the Taekwondo classes for 11 months, this is the first time I've actually taught an actual Zoom seminar officially as a kind of a meeting. So there might be a few glitches, so please bear with me. But we've got a good plan here. Thanks to uh, Master Manavaki and Mr. Kent Maris for their contributions as well to the plan. So they had some input in this and I'm delighted to be able to bring us in. Um, is there anybody here who's not an actual Taekwondo instructor? I don't think there is. No, perfect. I did want to open this to non-Taekwondo. Oh, well, hello, our new Sahyun Decker. Welcome, sir. So let's go through this. Um, we're going to run through five, six sections, and then we will have a Q&A at the end. Excuse me, <clears throat> I beg your pardon. Now, let me just bring up my very first slide. Give me one second. I have so many things open here. And we got, there we go. Zoom seminar, that's what I'm looking for. Here we go. This is just a quick run through of what we'll be covering today. Let's see, can I get my, there we go. So in part one, we're gonna run through how to create your account if you've never done it before. I'm going to assume everybody has no experience. Even though I know some of you have, it's better to assume that you've no experience and that way we don't leave anybody behind how to choose the appropriate Zoom plan that is right for you, how to adjust your settings from the start. If you set up your meeting settings from the very beginning, well, then they're going to apply to all of your classes and you don't have to keep doing it repeatedly. How to set up your recording settings. What hardware should you use? Audio, visual, and so forth. So mobile, apps or laptops. Some people are doing their classes with their mobiles, some people are using a laptop. I'm going to show you some comparisons. Should you use a microphone or not, as in a dedicated microphone or do a built-in microphone? What about a separate webcam? What about lighting? We're going to touch on all these. How to create your classes from the very start. Do you want recording classes the same time every week, two or three days? Breakout rooms, what are they, how you can use them, the passcode, how to keep it simple for your students. The class content, times of your classes, do you want to record them, how long should they be, what way are you going to break them down, age or grade. Next, running the class, multiple cameras or not, maybe you just want to use your laptop or phone, keep it simple, but you have the option to use multiple angles if you like how to share the sound, how to spotlight yourself so that the people in the class only see you no matter who is speaking. Breakout rooms, screen sharing, how to set up somebody, maybe you have assistant instructors, we can set them up as a co-host. And the shortcuts that you can use in your keyboard to get things done really quickly instead of always just tapping on the screen or fiddling with your mouse. Now, a lot of us are teaching children, so child protection is really important. So there'll be a little bit of duplication here, but I'll be emphasizing in this area the importance of spotlighting, displaying the names of the students on screen or not, muting the students and blocking them from chatting, how to use the waiting room. So some of you already experienced that. And photos and videos. Sometimes I see instructors and they take photographs or short video clips of them teaching students. And of course you have children's pictures and names clearly identifiable in those Facebook pages. And that's not good child protection. So there's simple ways we can uh, avoid that. And then part six will be Q and A. So I'm going to go back to the beginning again, and let's take it from the start. 
cool. Okay. One of those glitches I said might happen. <laughs> okay. Yes, accept, I accept. Go away. Go away. Microsoft Office is messing with me. Uh, no, how do I get rid of this? My first time using PowerPoint. There we go. Okay. Do, 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 do. Can I get rid of this? I have to select something. Okay, here we go. Getting started. So, how do we create an account? All right. Let's see, can I navigate through here? Where's my browser? Here we go. So here is where you want to go to. If you've never set up Zoom before, you just go to zoom.us. And then you click sign up, it's free. Now I'm already in there, so let me log out. Log me in automatically. Here we go. Sign up, it's free. Hopefully it won't log me in automatically. There you go. You put in your date of birth. It doesn't store it. And after that, so I'll just put in something random here. I won't make myself 100 years old. You put in your email address and that's it. Email address, password, and then you have an account. And it really is as simple as that. Now let's look at the plans. So I'll just go back here to my meetings. Let's come back, okay. Do, 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 do. Let's get me in. Now, let's give me one second to find that profile. Might have show my plan here somewhere. So I have a pro plan at the moment. I'll just separate, do a separate browser. Zoom plans. Should find it for me. Here we go. So when you join um, Zoom first, you will have a free account automatically. So you can have up to 100 people, but you're limited to 40 minutes. Now, if you're happy enough with classes under 40 minutes, great. But if you're going to be doing classes for longer than 40 minutes, then you're going to want to look at getting the pro. Now, that's 140 euro a year. It's about 15 euro a month, something like that, but 15 euro a month. So now you still have up to 100 people per class, but you're not limited time. They can, it can go on for up to 30 hours. And you can also record your classes. And I find that a very, very useful feature that I can record up to one gigabyte. That allows me to record about four or five classes. I leave them there for a few days, delete them, and then I'm ready to record the next ones. So I can't imagine most Taekwondo instructors are going to go beyond that up to the small and medium business, but look at the options are there if you want them. Now, let's go into settings. So I'm in my profile, I'm going to go to my settings. You don't have to remember all this, just to get a, a feel for it, and then you, you can always go back over the recording later. So in the settings, there is a multitude of them. You don't need to know them all, but I'll scroll through and I'll just highlight the ones that I think are very useful. The waiting room is a good one to have enabled. That means that when you've started your class, security-wise, nobody can join your class without you knowing. They automatically come into a waiting room and you have to admit them. Now, if students turn up late for class, it does interrupt the class, but it does also provide an opportunity to remind them of the discipline of being on time for class. I always start the meetings 15 or 20 minutes beforehand, and then students are able to log in and sort out internet issues in plenty of time. So that's the waiting room. Meeting passcode, that's the security. You always want that. It's always built into the link you're sending out to your students. So if they're just clicking on a link in a text or an email, it's built in. Um, I'm just gonna be scanning through here until I see something that, there it is. Embed passcode in the invite link for one click join. Make sure that's on. It just means that when students click on the link, they don't have anything else to do. It launches the Zoom app immediately for them. I'm going to just scroll down here. Here we go. So when you have the meeting set up, 
participants video, just have that switched on. It means that when your students log in, their, their video is on automatically. If they want to turn it off until the class starts, that's up to them, but at least they're ready to go when they log in. Audio type, I don't let anybody, um, you know, obviously use telephones. They can't train, so I just have it set to computer audio. Keep going down here. Now, this is a very useful one. Mute all participants when they join a meeting. That's up to you. You can let, if it's adult students, you can have that switched off and you can let them talk to them, talk to you know, each other before class starts, if you like. I tend to just keep it switched on. That means when the students join, they tend to be muted automatically. And I also disable the opportunity for them to unmute themselves. You can do that and I'll show you how to do that later. When we're within the meeting, here the chat feature is on. So I, it allows the students to send me chats. Sometimes I forget to turn off my microphone. Maybe I'll mute myself for a water break because I wanna to talk to somebody else that's nearby or something. But I might forget to unmute myself going back teaching the class and the students can say chat, sir, sorry, you're muted. But what I don't allow them to do is to do a private chat. That means allowing the students to do private chats to each other. I have that switched off. It just can avoid bullying, which is unusual really in Taekwondo classes, but it, it just avoids problems. It also, it's a distraction that's not there for the students chatting to each other. Because if they, you don't know what's going on, you know, they can do it. So I would have that switched off. Um, I think the, this is a one you want switched on co-host if you have somebody like an assistant instructor in the class and you want them to help you take the class and they have the control to unmute themselves and unmute other students then you need to have that switched on screen sharing i would have that set to host only whiteboard not relevant for the most part I think we are done here. Breakout rooms. Allow hosts to assign participants to breakout rooms when scheduling. Doesn't matter if that's ticked or not because you're not gonna always know who's in class. So I, I tend to just do the, I assign people to breakout rooms when I see who's in the class. But breakout room, make sure it's turned on. If you think you'll have an assistant instructor to take a smaller group, Group HD video, so that's high definition. Now, if you don't have good broadband, turn it off because the higher quality pictures is going to obviously use more bandwidth and it's more likely that your screen will freeze for your students. So I would have that turned off. Virtual background, you're not going to want that on when you're teaching. And most of this stuff here is not going to be relevant to us. I think we are almost done. There we go. So now I adjusted all those settings within the browser, but whenever you use Zoom, it also uses an app. So we are actually in the middle uh, of the app at the moment. So let me just minimize the screen and see, can I fire up the app separately? If I actually click on here, no, so bear with me one moment while I just see about making that switch. Fire up Zoom. There we go. Perfect. So this is the app itself. I don't use this much because it never seems to show the meetings in proper order, but where it's handy is for adjusting the settings. So when I click on my picture here and I go into settings, this is brilliant. You can set up your video. You can choose have high definition on or off. It's off at the moment. If I click it on, it might improve things slightly. I can mirror the video. You can adjust for low light. These are all things you're only going to really want to do if you have you know, decent enough broadband. Audio. 
Um, here is a useful one, automatically adjust microphone volume. Now I have that switched on now because I'm just sitting down talking to you. But when I'm teaching, we don't keep our voices of the same volume. When we start counting or when we give our commands, you know, we use a much stronger voice and I don't want Zoom taking that away from me. So I untick that. Suppressing background noise, using all these as auto because you want to just take out all the, you know, any background noise. So I would, I would leave all the rest there for teaching classes. You don't need to go near them. Going down to chat. Again, it allow, you, you want to allow the students to send you messages, but not to be testing each other. You don't need to change anything here. Recording. Now, if you, I record everything to the cloud when I set up my meetings, we'll be coming to that later. I don't, I don't let them come onto my hard drive for a simple reason is that I just forward on the link to the students directly. And then they can download it if they want. But I tick this because sometimes I do want to edit the recording. So if you tick off optimize for a third party video editor, it just gives you the choice to edit it if you have a video editing app and you save it to your phone or your computer or whatever. And that's pretty much it. There, that's all you really want to go and want to change in settings. So this is all your, your initial setup. Do that once and then it's done forever. Let's go back to the PowerPoint for a moment. So choose plan, done. Just seeing the settings, done, done. Perfect. Right, part two, hardware. Mobile app versus laptop. This is a pretty important one. I have a video I want to show you here. So I've, I've pre-recorded some videos because I just knew it would be easier to show you those than trying to do show you Zoom features while I'm in the middle of a Zoom meeting. It's kind of tricky. First of all, I just want to bring everybody up. You can all hear me okay still, yes? Could you give me a thumbs up? Yeah, you can, brilliant. Fantastic. So I'm going to show you the video now. And this is what the mobile app looks like. Let's start a meeting by clicking on new meeting on the top corner. I'm not going to use the video for now and I won't connect to the audio either. On the top of the screen where it says zoom, you may have to tap on the screen to bring up the options. See where it says zoom there? When you click on that, it just brings up the meeting details in case you want to text and then somebody after your meeting has started. Let's look at the share content button there in the bottom center. This allows you to share your screen with the participants or share files from your Dropbox and so on. You'll have already linked these to your account. Next up, it's the participants button. This lets you see all the participants in the class and you can do different things like mute them. If you tap on your own name, then what you can actually do is you can rename yourself. So if you've got multiple cameras in there and they each have your name on it, you can just change it to side view or rear view, whatever the case might be. Now, the bottom right hand corner, there's more. This brings up different things like raising hand. That won't apply to you, but students can use it to get your attention. Security allows you to lock the meeting if you don't want anybody to join once it started, or you can use the waiting room and switch that on and off. I use that a lot myself. Going back into more settings again, and we'll go into the meeting settings. And of course here, you can change any of the settings after the meeting has started, such as, you know, students muting upon entry or not. But you can change all these if you need to while the meeting is going on. If you need to do something on your phone, you can go to minimize meeting and that just shrinks the zoom area into the top corner of your screen. You can do whatever you need to do and then come back out of it. Go into more again. And we're going to look at the backgrounds and filters. I don't really recommend using this yourself. 
because you're teaching a class, but I'm just showing you what you can do. You can just change the background if you want to. To end the meeting, I just click on the end button in the top right hand corner. That'll give me two options. Leave the meeting with somebody else in charge, or I can just end the meeting for all and that'll end the class. Is everybody okay with that? Make sense? Great. Now let's look at the desktop version. So this is the same whether it's a laptop or a, or a full desktop computer. Let's look at the desktop version and see how it compares. When you move the mouse, the options pop up. Down here on the bottom left, you've got mute and unmute and video as well, start or turn off. Now, if you click on the little triangle here that I'm highlighting, when you click on that, it opens up more options. So you can choose what microphone you're using. You might have a Lavalier microphone that's plugged in or a Bluetooth one. Also, if you're connected to a TV via HDMI cable, you can choose where you hear sound. If the students are speaking to you, you can either listen on the laptop speaker or you can choose the TV speaker. It should, it should appear. You can also test your speaker and microphone. You can go into audio settings. And not only does this open audio settings, but you have access to all of the other settings as well. When you go into your video, again, if you have more than one camera, you can select it. Background can be chosen. When you click on video settings, it brings you directly to the video settings, but you also have access to all of the other settings as well. The center bottom of the screen, similar to the mobile app, when you click on security, it allows you to lock the meeting or use the waiting room. And it allows you to, you can choose whether to, participants can share the screen, a chat and so on. When you click on the participants button, it's very similar to the mobile app. Clicking it again closes it, by the way. This is actually one handy feature as well. If you click on mute all, so over on the bottom right, when you've opened the list of participants and you click mute all, unticking this box, allow participants to unmute themselves. That makes absolutely certain nobody in the class can turn on their microphone without your permission. And then you just click yes. That's a feature I use at the start of every single class. It allows me to make sure that nobody can accidentally turn on their microphone and interrupt the class. When you click on the chat button, that pops up. Clicking on chat button again, closes it down. Share screen, you have far more options in the share screen here on the desktop version. Usually just the screen is automatically highlighted, but also any other window or program you've opened can be shared directly. If you click on advanced, it gives you other options as well. And of course, files. I'll be talking more about sharing stuff later on. Record. You can choose to record on your computer or record to the cloud. Recording to the cloud is better if you're sending the recording to other students. This is the big thing you have access to that you don't have access to on the mobile app, breakout rooms. And that's when you can have an instructor take a smaller group of your students aside and teach them separately. It's like a virtual room. And I will go through that in more detail in another video. And that's it. That's really the big difference between the laptop version and the mobile app. I far, far prefer the extra options that I have with the desktop version. It just allows me to make it a much more interesting experience for the students. Now, let me just try and maximize this for a moment. Okay, is everybody okay on that? Brilliant. So I think you can see, um, if you have been working with a, a mobile device so far, you, have a, you do have more options with a, a laptop. And if I'm going to be using Zoom going forward, whether we're back to normal classes or not, I find it actually gives me a lot of options. I can be teaching class to 20 students and I can have another 20 students at home 
following the class on Zoom. And I will teach a class appropriate to that. It's a great feature to have. And if you haven't done that yet, and of course, restrictions are different in every country. So let me just stop the share for one moment here. Restrictions are different in every country. So you may not you know, have had to do that. But I wanted to keep my class number small, still get everybody two or three classes a week. So that's how I did it. Got 20 of them in at a time, had the other 20 or so at home, following the class in Zoom. Then the next day, they just rotated. The students that were home on day one are now in the Dojang. And then everybody gets the chance in the Dojang. And that worked for me. So I think it's as important as instructors that we're not apologetic. And I've seen students doing it going, oh, I'm so sorry, we're back on Zoom again. Oh, no. But I'm, I'm going a little bit away from the function of Zoom now to as instructors and leaders, we set the tone for everything. So it's important we're not apologetic to our students. Zoom can be fantastic. We just have to embrace it. it is, at the beginning, it was a necessity. It was a challenge. And it was difficult. But once you get past that initial teething issue, and realize this can be a brilliant addition to my training and my, my students, you'll actually find ways of teaching them you never thought was possible. So I would encourage you to, to make that investment in, in using a laptop if possible. It'll give you so many more options. Back to the PowerPoint. Here we go. Microphone. Now, this one, I'm actually just going to give you an example of how this works. I really recommend having a microphone of some kind. It can be a Lavalier microphone. This is, you know, the small little collar ones that you'd see people being, you know, wearing for interviews, the small little fluffy microphone. They're really light. And then, you know, you'll have a little Bluetooth clip you can stick in your doorbook pocket if you have one or wrap it around your belt. And then the other, the other part, the receiver, you'll plug it into your laptop. Or you can use a Bluetooth microphone like I'm using now, which is just a one piece, just clips on my collar. It's a lot heavier. So you have to bear that in mind when you're jumping around teaching, you are going to get a little bit of, little bit of impact on the microphone. That's normal. I actually wear two microphones in teaching. I have one microphone, a Lavalier one for my laptop, and I record all my classes as well using my iPhone so that I have a high definition recording. The Zoom recordings are not great quality. So I use my phone because the camera is far superior, but I want the sound to be good as well. So I use two microphones and then you'll see Gorilla Tape on the front of my t-shirt or go book, depending on the class I'm wearing, who cares? It's not a bent to be a fashion statement. It's about doing a good job. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my microphone now. I'm gonna to have to stop the share for a moment. And I'm going to use the laptop microphone and I'm gonna walk away. And I want you to hear the difference because this is what your students are hearing. Now I've chosen my laptop mic and I'm gonna walk away. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Was there a drop off in volume? So, so. Now I'm going to go to my Bluetooth mic, the one I have right in my collar, right here. And I'll do the same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That should have been a lot more consistent, was it? Yeah. Now I'm in my kitchen here. Okay. If you're in a big hall, the difference that makes is phenomenal because you, instead of having an eight foot ceiling, you could have a 14 foot ceiling walls that are a lot further away from what I have in here. So you're going to have a much bigger drop off when you don't have a Bluetooth mic. So I, I want you to hear that for yourself. The next thing you might want is lighting. Um, it does make a difference if you're in a small room that's not well lit, well then lighting can really help. If you're in a big hall with plenty of lighting, I wouldn't even worry about it because you'd need to invest so much in big, huge lights in a big hall, it just wouldn't be worth it. But I did want to mention it because some people work from a small studio. On Fridays and Tuesdays, I actually teach from my home Dojang, which isn't that well lit, 
So I will. I actually am going to be getting a an ex, an additional light in there to make a difference. At the moment, what I'm doing is after I record the classes, I'm brightening them up with the video editor. Now, let's look at the next section. So I'm just to keep you with me. I'm clicking on share screen, clicking on screen, and hit share, and you'll see exactly how to do that. So microphone. Um, I when I realized I was going to be teaching online, I got the I got the best laptop I could afford because I wanted it to have the best features. I wanted the Bluetooth. I wanted it to have a reasonably good screen, but I definitely wanted to have a good webcam. So I didn't need to invest in one separately. But if you already have a laptop, maybe it's just a few years old, you may not need to invest in another laptop. Well, you can make a huge difference to your classes by getting a better webcam. 100, 150 euro will get you a cracking webcam. So I would recommend that it's, remember, it's not just about sound. Your students need to see you clearly as well. So your broadband is important, but a, a good camera is essential in my, in my opinion. So I would really recommend that. Lighting covered. All right, creating classes. So we are going to look at creating from the start, recurring breakout rooms. We're going to do it right now. I'm going to do it with you. So I go to my browser. Uh, do, 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 do. Too many shortcuts in my head. Then there. Okay, here we go. So schedule a meeting. Give it its name. I just leave it at my meeting. I don't ever put anything in there. So let's say I'm doing a class on a Monday. So I'll check tomorrow. I pick my time, do it three o'clock same. It's gonna be one hour. Make sure you have the appropriate time zone for your classes. You would be shocked how many people forget to change the time zone. If you're going to be doing the same class every week, you need to click on recurring meeting. Okay. Now, there is another way of changing how this works. So you can have the same class every day or every week or once a month or so on. So it's up to you how you do it. So let's say I'm going to do it weekly. Now, what that's done is it's brought up the days of the week here. See? If I'm doing my green to black belt, this is going to be a big time-saving tip for you, and it's going to make it easier for your students to keep track of links. If you're doing, um, let's say, a green to black belt class three times a week, take off all the days you're doing it. So let's say it's Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. What this means is that you're using the same link for all your classes. It's, it's less fiddling around with you setting up classes and your students have only one link for all their classes instead of a different link for Monday, Wednesday and Friday. And then you'll have parents texting you every day. What's the link for today's class? Give them one link to use for every class and your life is going to be easier. In terms of the time, you can set that, let's say your class times are different on each of those days. Just pick the latest time. Let's say you can make it nine o'clock at night. You can start the meeting whenever you want. The main thing is, is that when does it show up in your list of classes within Zoom? So pick the latest time that you want, not necessarily the time you're going to run the class, because you can run the class at any time. You just click the start button. So that's what I do. I usually set all my classes a few hours after they're really due to start, because that way they're always there ready for me to go. And I click the three days, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. Now you can have an end date. I usually make sure you click the radio button after. It's no good just changing the number here. You have to make sure you select the button, the radio button after, and then go down as far as you can, select 20, because the more often, the more classes you have in there, the less often you have to keep resetting this up. 
Do you need registration required? No. What that means is I set this meeting up so I'd have everybody's email address and I could send you a recording, but you don't need to do that with your students. So I wouldn't bother taking that off. Passcode. Zoom automatically chooses one, but you can change it because sometimes they don't use the link. They use the meeting ID, which is a nine or 10 digit number, and then they use the password. Well, it just makes it easier for them if you, if you change the password. So I just put in CTKDS for all my classes, which is Connect to Consequence. Do you want to use the waiting room? It's up to you. I usually don't bother selecting that. I'll only activate it within the meeting when I start the class. Computer audio, I usually just set that, leave that as it is. Do you want to allow participants to join any time? Now that can be a useful function. What that means is if you haven't actually gotten around to starting the meeting, it means the students can log in ahead of you. I use that with my advanced class because my beginner class finishes about five minutes beforehand and that's cutting it kind of tight. So when I switch over, when I end my beginner class and I hit start in the advanced, I usually have 20 students in there already. But as soon as I log in, I become the host automatically and I take control of it. Breakout room pre-assign. That is useful if you want to create the rooms. You're not gonna add the students yet, but you can create the rooms. So you can just go, let's say you know you have two assistant instructors. I can click on add. I can click here and change the name. So this could be a beginner. And then save it. Actually, I'm not gonna save it yet because then it takes me out. And I could do another one and we call that intermediate. And it just means you have less work to do. You don't have to use all of these when you're teaching, but they're ready to go if you want them. Better to have it and not use it than to want it and not actually have it. No, okay, save. And there we go, two my, my two breakout rooms are ready to go. Automatically record meeting, I always use this. I always select the cloud because I have my one gigabyte available to me. And that's it. I hit save. And now my meeting is ready to go. When I want to get this to my students, it depends on how you communicate with them. You can email them or you can just copy the link into a group email. Like I would use MailChimp and I use group texts. So you can click copy. By the way, you have this browser on your mobile phone as well. So I do this on my phone when I want to text it. I just click copy invitation. I don't send them the whole thing. If you click, click copy meeting, it copies everything. You don't want to be putting that in text. So what I do is I just select the bit at the bottom. Join the Zoom meeting. I just select that. And there we go. That's what I send them. Copy copy that, I click copy, whatever way you do it on your computer. And it just stops you sending because you see every class in that, record, all those recording classes, that's going to be in all that messaging. So you don't want that. So that's how you create your classes. It's really straightforward. And you can even save it as a template so you can do the exact same thing. Any questions so far on what we've done? Is everybody happy? Okay, Mr. Graham. Yes, sir. It's about your microphones. Mm -hmm. Is there any specific links you would recommend? You're quite in, interested with the sure. microphones. I, um, I really recommend the Lavalier microphone made by Sub Zero. That's the one that I use on my laptop because it plugs into the jack. It's really light. It's not expensive. It's 70 euro. It's, uh, so the brand is, is Sub Zero. Le Valier mic. And I get it on um, a British company, Gear for Music. And it's uh, the number four, Gear for Music dot co dot UK. And they have an Irish one as well, of course. So you can get it off them for like 65, 70 pounds. And you get it in two days. It's a really good one. For the mobile device, obviously, you're not going to be plugging something in. So you want an entirely Bluetooth one. I actually got this off a of Facebook ad. I'm delighted I did. The quality is unbelievable. Uh, Sabina Tech 
spelled S-A-B-I-N-E-T-E-K. And it might take about three weeks because they ship it from China. I think I got them in two weeks, actually. But I, I'm delighted with them. And I got two of them because they work in pairs if you want them to. You can have a master and a slave. Don't get bogged down into technology. And what it does is it allows you to plug one of them using a normal jack cable into your laptop if you want. So it's a, it's a really good option. That's why I bought two together at a discount. So that okay? That's great. That's great. Thank, Thank you, sir. Now, any other questions before I move on? Okay, where are we? We've created the breakout rooms. All right, let's consider class content. It's just worth putting thought into, you know, getting the best out of your students. Times, what times are you gonna put your classes on? Students getting home from work and then having to get to class is not as much of an option when your classes are online. So you might decide to do them a little bit earlier so you can have a longer class. But just to bear these things in mind, same with kids. You know, are they at school or are the schools closed? If they're home from school and there's somebody minding them, they might be delighted to have a morning class. So they just, just think about all these different things because you can always change it. Are you going to record the classes? Well, that's up to you. There's a pros and cons. It's nice to have your students in class live because you can see them and you can correct what they're doing wrong. It's not very easy in Zoom, but you can do it. Um, whereas if they're only looking at recordings, they are getting what you learned, but you can't correct them. So that's the downside. So you, you know your audience, I think is my tip there. Know your audience. The recording is available. I have one class that I do on a Tuesday night for my teen adults, and I only make the recording available to those that were there on the night. If you miss it, you've missed it forever. Recording is not available to you. On one hand, you could say, ah, yeah, but they're still missing out. Well, they're going to get the information at another stage. But I want to encourage the attendance as much as possible. So you could do that. You could, you know, you could give them the recording of one and make them miss the other if they're not there. How long is your class going to be? Again, you have to factor it in. Teaching on Zoom is hard work. I'm conscious now I haven't stopped talking really for the last... 45 minutes so when you're teaching in zoom you can't really just stop and look and walk between your students like you can in person so zoom classes are more challenging on your voice and they are more challenging on your body i have never been so tired as i have been the last 12 months because on top of doing my own training and i train most days i'm doing kicks punches push-ups squats lunges everything with my students because i'm just i'm not going to just give them exercise doing standard looking at a screen. I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna work with them. So I pace myself to a certain extent, but you know, by the time I've done, I'm on my third or fourth class, I'm getting tired. So you, know, you, you wanna figure out how long do you want the class to be? For kids, half an hour is usually loads. For my beginners, that's my kind of white to green tags. I do 50 minutes, it's more than enough. And then I do an hour, 15, hour and 20 minutes with my advanced class. They're able for it. And there's enough to teach them and to keep them going for that, you know, that, that hour and 20 minutes. Whereas the syllabus isn't that expansive, I think, with the beginner classes. So unless you want to do every class exactly the same, what are you going to do? Um, how are you going to break them down? I'll tell you what I'm doing, and then you can see if, if it works for you or not. In person, I have my Cubs, that's age four to seven. Then I have my Samurais, that's age eight to 12. And then I have my Teen Alice. When, when the students are together in the room, that age separation is important because kids need to be kids and adults want to be with adults. But on, online, it's not as clear cut. So what I'm actually doing is the Cubs are the Cubs. That's fine. I keep them as they are. But now I just put all of the samurais and the adults together and I'm dividing them all by grade. So it's white to green tag, whatever age you are. It's green to black, whatever age you are. If I'm giving something, an exercise, I can differentiate. It could be, right, samurais, 20 push-ups in your knuckles, adults, 40, and so on. 
and I can just very, you know, I can easily differentiate that way. So you, you can decide for yourself what breakdown will work best. But it, you, it is something that you need to think about and it might be different than what you do in person. So what I think we'll do is let's just take a quick 60 second break in case anybody wants to go to the bathroom. I, get a I, I need to get a glass of water anyway. And uh, we'll come right back with actually running classes. Okay, so give me one moment and I'll be right back everyone. Now, while we're waiting to get everybody back, one tip for you. If you are teaching a class and you're using Bluetooth mics, has anybody seen the movie, The Naked Gun? You remember the movie, The Naked Gun? Double, triple, quadruple check, you muted your microphone before you go to the bathroom. Okay? As is I can't say it enough times. I see Master Man back in here splitting herself laughing. But it, that, is, it's a, that is a really important thing because instructors, you know, we carry our dignity. You're done. You're done if you make that mistake. You're finished. <laughs> if, you have, if it's your other class, you have some hope for coming back to us because when it was the kids, you're done. So double, triple, quadruple check, you muted. It. it does happen. And last year, there's, uh, there was so many um, gaffes that people made on Zoom in the corporate sector. And there's people carrying their phones with them into the bathroom and they were being videoed using the toilet because they just didn't realize they could be seen. There's a compilation. If you want a really good laugh, there's loads of compilations on YouTube for a uh, Zoom mistake. So check it out if you want to laugh. Okay, let's go back to the uh, PowerPoint for a moment, back to screen sharing. We are going on to now to running the classes. Actually, I'm not going to do this yet. I'm not going to share the screen yet. Okay, running classes and how to use multiple cameras. Now, I'm going to log in on my phone. So bear with me. You may want to use this feature, you may not. It's asking me for the capture now. Good timing, here we go, join. So I've got a virtual background in here, which I'm just gonna turn off just to, uh, can I do that? Uh, not very easily. No, check this out. Oh, it's after giving me another virtual background. Look at that for fun. So, I know you can't see me yet, but bear with me. I'm using a feature that I'll explain better in a moment. See that? Sorry about the virtual background in both. Two images of me on your screen. Remove all spotlights. Now, what that does, is it gives me the option to teach. I'm gonna leave it, leave the meeting now. It gives me the option to have a side view and a rear view. So when I'm teaching my advanced class, I'll often, now I, I was using three, but now I'm using my iPhone to record the class. So that's taken that one away, but I have a backup, a backup iPhone and an SE, cheaper one. And it, if for a Zoom class, it's fine. So I stick it on a tripod and I put it to the side I have my laptop in front, and now my students are getting to see a side view. Sometimes you're gonna to wanna to turn sideways anyway, but you don't have to do it every single time you're showing them something. You can actually spotlight both images on their screen, on their TV, whatever they're using. And it's as simple as that. Just log in to the meeting on your second device, and you use the spotlighting feature, which I'm going to show you in a moment, all right? now. Is anybody, raise a hand, is anybody playing music off a phone or a speaker in the same room as your class already? Anybody? No? Wow, okay. Oh, no, oh, I'm screaming. Okay, there's, there, are, there is, a, I know a number of instructors that are doing that. Now, there's a really good way to do it, and I'm gonna show you in a moment. So, this is what it usually sounds like. I want you to hear the difference.
Different, right? It's different, isn't it? <laughs> so I, so many people are playing their phones or other things in the, in the background because they want the students to hear the music, but it's, it sounds terrible because Zoom, remember what I said, Zoom cuts out what it thinks is background noise. So there is an option where you can go to share screen and you can play your computer music. And I'll be, I think that might be the next one. Well, it's coming up shortly. It's coming up shortly where I'll show you how to do that. But for, at least you know that it exists. And you can only do this, I think, on your on the laptop or desktop. You can't do it from the mobile app. What we are going to do now is look at a video spotlighting. So back to share screen, share sound. Look, there we go. So have a look at this video where it actually explains how we do screen sharing. No, sorry, not screen sharing, spotlighting. Spotlighting is the process of making sure that everybody in the meeting sees your image or another image that you're allocating. It can be done very simply by navigating your mouse to the corner of the screen and holding it over the three dots. Click on that and then you'll see Spotlight for everyone. When you click on this, it maximizes the screen for all viewers. Now I'm going to change my view back to the gallery view so I can see everybody. If you're using more than one camera, you can actually spotlight another up to nine images. So I'm going to choose this other person, Ray Clancy. I do the same thing, I select and I click add spotlight or alternatively, I can replace the spotlight as well. I'm gonna add. So now what you can see is it's prioritizing those two camera views. When I'm teaching, I like to see all the students, so I'll always go back to gallery view and I can see everybody. You can quickly check which images are spotlighted by this little icon in front of the name. It's like a pin here and the next one here beside Ray Clancy. So that is spotlighting. When you want to remove it, you can either do one at a time by clicking on the same menu button and you can click remove spotlight. Alternatively, you can go here to your view and click remove all spotlights. And that is that. Spotlighting is a very useful function, especially when you have children in the class and you want to make sure that even if one of the students is speaking, the speaker isn't highlighted on screen. It's only the person who's spotlighted. Everybody okay on that? No? So, Ms. McNamara, let's uh, see if you have a question. Sorry, that, that video didn't actually play. Oh, did it not play for anybody? No, it didn't play, it didn't play. Wow. And so I think I think everyone had their hands up as well, sorry to tell oh, you that, that it wasn't playing. Oh, that's very strange. Oh, that's no problem, I'll, I'll, play, I'll play now. I'm gonna leave you I'll leave you on mute just for a moment and uh, you yeah. can tell me but that's strange. Yeah. I did select a slightly different um and I thought it was just me and I'm there going, is there something wrong with my I was messing about trying to get it going, but then I could see everyone else yeah. in putting their hands up, so I knew it wasn't me. <laughs> I'm I'm selecting uh, the share screen one this time. And I'll play it again. Is that better? That's it now, I think. Yeah, that's it. Start. Is the process of making sure that everybody in the meeting sees your image or another image that you're allocating. It can be done very simply by navigating your mouse to the corner of the screen and holding it over the three dots. Click on that and then you'll see spotlight for everyone. When you click on this, it maximizes the screen for all viewers. Now I'm going to change my view back to the gallery view so I can see everybody. If you're using more than one camera, you can actually spotlight another up to nine images. So I'm going to choose this other person, Ray Clancy. I do the same thing, I select, and I click Add Spotlight, or alternatively, 
I can replace the spotlight as well. I'm going to add. So now what you can see is it's prioritizing those two camera views. When I'm teaching, I like to see all the students, so I'll always go back to gallery view and I can see everybody. You can quickly check which images are spotlighted by this little icon in front of the name. It's like a pin here and the next one here beside Ray Clancy. So that is spotlighting. When you want to remove it, you can either do one at a time by clicking on the same menu button and you can click remove spotlight. Alternatively, you can go here to your view and click remove all spotlights and that is that. Spotlighting is a very useful function, especially when you have children in the class and you want to make sure that even if one of the students is speaking, the speaker isn't highlighted on screen. It's only the person who's spotlighted. Um, bear with me here. Stop share. There we go. Better? <laughs> Not sure what happened last time. Uh, I, is, that a, is that cool for everybody? You're all good? I want to get rid of this virtual background. I was playing with it earlier and um, there we go. Now, um, any questions on that? Okay, Ms. McMara, you first, because you helped me out there. So basically, sir, what you're saying with that is on my side, um, we'll just say when I'm doing a class with Mr. Graham, I would pin Mr. Graham to my screen. But what you're doing on your side is you're automatically pinning yourself to the screen so it doesn't jump on somebody else when they're talking. Now, this is where we have to be very precise. Pinning is something else. Okay. So if everybody was to go to, actually, no, you can't. You, you, I think everybody can do this feature if whether you're a host or not. When you click on that little three dots and you bring down the menu, just try it everybody there if you don't mind and see, if you're on a laptop that is. And you'll see that there is a pin and there is a spotlight, but you may not see the spotlight. Pinning is only maximizing the person on your screen. Yeah. Spotlighting, maximize or uh, prioritize it for everybody. Mm. And that's a key difference. So, yeah. So what I'm saying is for me as a student, I yes. would pin my instructor. So that's all I see. Yes. The student can do that. Yeah. Absolutely. And they the won't need, they won't, they won't need to if you, if you spotlight. Exactly. So as the, as the instructor, when you spotlight it, you, you pin that for everyone. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly it. You've got it. You've got it. Any other questions on that so far? No, I think we're good. Okay, let's move on to the next one. How to actually use your breakout rooms. And then we'll have a bit of fun. I think we'll do a practice one. I only thought of that this morning. Okay, share screen. Boom, boom. There we go. Breakout rooms are the Zoom equivalent of having an instructor take a smaller group of students for you. You can have as many rooms as you want. It just depends on how many other instructors you're going to be utilizing. Let's set one up. Go to the bottom of your screen where all these option buttons are and you're looking for breakout rooms. Click on that. Highlight the screen here at the top, room one. You can rename it or you can leave it as it is, and you can even delete. Then you go into Assign, and I'm going to choose the students I want to go into the room. So let's just randomly choose Mr. Connelly, Ms. Marina, and Ms. Connolly. Notice I'm not in the list. I, I can join the room with a separate method. Now I want to go to the Options, and usually the only one I'll change is I'll get rid of this countdown because when I close all the rooms, I want the students to come back to the main session immediately and not wait 60 seconds. Every second of class time is valuable. So I'll get rid I'll untick that and that mean when I close the room they join straight away. So now I, I'm not ready to open the room just yet because I need to have the instructor be able to control their own microphone. And at the moment, every student is muted. So what I can do is I select the instructor here. Let's say it's Ms. Connolly. 
and I'll make them a co-host that gives them autonomy over their own microphone. Yes, I do want it to be co-host. So I select that. And now I can open the breakout room whenever I want. So let's do that. Open all rooms. And now you can see what happens is it tells me room one, they're all going to join. They'll get pro they, they will get prompted to join, so they do need to accept it. And then these are the students that are in the, going to be left in the main session. Now I've given my students the option to not actually stay with their cameras for this recording, so they may not actually go and join the breakout room, but that's fine. Let's close it. Now that the breakout rooms are live, I can go and I can join it. Oh, one or two are, have decided to join. So I will click on join, and that allows me to go to that breakout room, as you can see, And now I'm going to be here with all the other students. I can give instructions, whatever I want to do. And then I can leave the room, bottom right hand corner, I can leave the room and go back to the main session. Just make sure that you click leave breakout room and that you don't actually end or leave the entire meeting. Leave breakout room. And that will bring me back to the main session. And here I am. I'm back to the main session with the rest of my students. Whenever I'm ready to end the, the breakout rooms, I click on breakout rooms again, and I click close all rooms. And for some reason, that 58 seconds is still there. So we just wait it out. But what will happen at the end of that 60 seconds is they'll all come back and everyone will be back in the main session again. And that is how we operate breakout rooms. How is everybody with that? Happy enough? I, I discovered why the 60 seconds timeout reappeared. Do you remember when I uh, removed the 60 second timeout? Then I closed down the window and I went, I went to Ms. Connolly and I opened it up again, the tab. The 60 seconds comes back if you do that. Okay, so if you close it down and then you reopen it, before the, the rooms are opened, make sure you go back in and get rid of that 60 seconds if you want to. I'm, I'm still learning here. <laughs> okay, so that was do, 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 breakout rooms. Okay, screen sharing is next. Screen sharing is next. There may be times when you want to share something on your own computer with the class. In this case, you go to the share screen option here in the bottom center of your screen. Now, when you click on that, it gives you a number of different options. You can share your entire screen, or you can share maybe just one program in particular. As you can see, I have a YouTube video up. That is what I'm going to be sharing, but I usually just select a screen option. Now I will be showing at a later stage how you can actually use the music only option, but I, I, I'll leave that for another time. We'll do that live. So I'll go back to basic here. So just leave it at screen, but if you want the students to hear the video you're playing, then click on share computer sound. That allows your students to hear the audio. And then you click on share. And as you can see, it's automatically gone to my video here. And then you just hit play. It's not for long. It's just having the strength in the kick, the explosiveness, the power. Yap Chai Jirugi, it means punch with. When you're done sharing, up here in the top of your screen, you can see when you move the mouse up to that, it opens up all your options. You can do a new share, but you can just stop the share. And as soon as you press that, it brings you right back to your main meeting again. And that is screen sharing. Now. 
Any questions on that? Is everybody okay? Brilliant. All right. We will push on. Um, I think you've already got an idea of co-hosting, but I, I'll show you the video anyway, in case there's something in there that I didn't mention. By the way, when I was doing the music earlier and I compared the difference between playing it on your phone and letting your microphone pick it up, that's how I did it. Scre I went into that share screening feature and I selected share computer music only. And then whether if it's Spotify or whatever other music app you might be playing, it just shares the audio that's playing on your computer and not video. So it's a great way of just uh, giving a bit of atmosphere in your classes, if you like, or you might wanna play music in the background for maybe you're doing some cardio work or something, you're doing all fitness training and you want the students to, to have access to your own playlist. The main thing is, is watch the volume. They won't hear your voice over the music unless you turn the view, music down. I turn it down to about 30% and they can hear it as background noise, but they can hear your instructions over it. And that was something I had to learn the hard way. Let's move on to the next video. We're doing well in time, I think. When you start a meeting or a class, as the host, you have control over everything that happens. There are times when you will want to allocate similar responsibility to somebody else who's in the meeting, like for example, an assistant instructor. And you can do this by allocating another person to become the host or to become a co-host. And that means that they have the same power as you. They can unmute their own microphone, even if you have muted everybody. And they can also unmute other students if you're in a breakout room. So it's very easy to allocate somebody to become a co-host. Let's say I want Miss Connolly, who's my most senior black belt, to become the co-host. I go up here to that menu button in the top right hand corner, click on that, and then I click make host. And that allows her to become the, the actual host. If we go here, I can make this person. I've already made Miss Connolly a co-host earlier, that's why it didn't appear in her option. So I can make him a co-host by clicking on that. You can see, do you want to make Ray Clancy the co-host of this meeting? Yes. And it's done as simply as that. When you want to remove it, you can withdraw the co-host permission. There, there usually isn't any need to do that, but if you want to, you can. And that is how we allocate that co-hosting privileges to another student or instructor. Everybody happy with that? Great. Now, not, I, I'm going to give you some good news. Not only is the whole recording of this meeting going to be made available to you, but I'll, I'll put all these separate videos into Dropbox as well, so you can go direct to, this, to the short clips if you want to, all right? Okay. It's only 100 euro a video. That's all. Okay. That's all the videos I wanted to show you. Now, hands up who's actually doing this from a, a laptop, as in a Windows-based device, a laptop or a desktop. Brilliant. Here is four shortcuts I want you to note. And you can try them now. You can actually try them now. They won't all work with you, for, but, but I think uh, a couple of them will. So you all have an Alt key on your keyboard. It's probably different from MacBook, but you'll find out what they are by Googling. These are really handy shortcuts instead of always using your mouse. Alt and A mutes you. Alt and A mutes you. So what I'll do is I'm going to unmute everybody now. That's, and then you can uh, all practice turning off your microphone you, yourself if you can. So you can unmute yourself and just practice Alt and A, Alt and A. Mute on and off. It's a nice little shortcut. It's really, really quick. Another one that's really good is for knocking off your video, Alt and V, Alt and V. Really quick, video on and off, Alt and V. Brilliant one for the Windows devices. There you go. 
on and off so much quicker than just fiddling with your mouse and, and if you're on a like if you're doing a you know a touch screen oh my god now these are ones you won't be able to use at the moment i think because of um obviously i'm the host um recording you know when i take give a water break or whatever i'll just stop the recording there's no need to be recording a minute of silence it's just using up bandwidth it's wasting time students are looking at it so i just um pause the recording you can use your mouse but alt and p pauses and we start the recording alt and p p for pause if you like and then the last quick one is alt and m m for mute that will unmute and mute everybody all at once now, the key thing to remember, of course, is, that, is if you have removed the permission of students to unmute themselves, when you press Alt and M, it doesn't automatically unmute them. It gives them a message to say, the host wants you to unmute your microphone. So it just gives them permission for like five seconds. Now, what I do is if you've been on my Facebook page in the last week, you might have seen me doing um, a couple of uh, lessons with, with my cubs. And, and I will often unmute when I could have 30, 35 cubs in that class. I can't unmute them one at a time. So Alt and M, boom, done in one split second. And when I want to cut them off, it gets too rowdy. There's just background noise. Alt and M shuts everyone's mic down in a split second. It's a great shortcut to have. Now, I have here changing settings within a meeting. Why did I make a note of that? Oh, here we go, Mr. Montier. For Mac users, the equivalents are command plus shift plus letter. Well, it's the same letter, is it? Great, there you go, Mac users, now we have it. Wonderful, wonderful. Changing settings within a meeting. I must have that there, I made a note, but there's just some settings you can change here. Bear with me, I made a note but I'm not sure exactly what I meant by it. <laughs> Probably to do with the mute and video settings. I'm not gonna worry about it. Any questions so far? Okay, right. I think we're down to our final part. So let's bring us back to the PowerPoint again. Maybe it's open, is it? Ah, oh, it's open. Okay, this is done, 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 done. Good, good. Could have actually clicked on them quicker. And the shortcuts, child protection. This is really just emphasizing stuff that I've shown you already. Child protection. Some parents just aren't gonna be comfortable with um, everybody seeing into the, the, child, the, the child's room. It could be their bedroom, it could be their sitting room, who knows? And the reasons are their own, but you will minimize students not participating in class for those reasons if you take these steps. So use the spotlighting feature because it allows you to talk to students and when they talk back, just because they're the speaker, they're not automatically on screen. Okay, so it's always gonna be you on screen. And I know I've checked my recordings to make sure this spotlighting works. You just, it has, it's something that you have to do automatically. When you start your class, the two things that I always make sure to do, spotlight myself and mute everybody so that they can't unmute themselves by accident. There are two things, it's just, it's automatic now. Um, the displaying of names. You can actually remove students displaying their names if you want to take a video footage and if you know all your students by face you don't necessarily need their names so it's you know it just gives you an option to use video footage and the children aren't identifiable by name on the screen if you're taking a photograph it's very easy to edit the photograph and you can just put a black mark over each name but you can't do that with video so that's a choice that you can make yourself but it's just something to consider Muting and blocking the chat. I've shown you how to do both of these. The muting should be done at the start of the class. And you can block chat forevermore by doing that in the settings 
at the very beginning. So the very, very first section when we went into how to do your main settings, just get rid of that, that they can't chat one-to-one. -one. It has to come to you. And lastly, use the waiting room if you like. You can either have it from the start and then you can just admit everybody all at once. I let people into the class in the start. Why? Because I have music playing and they just, you'll see them. They're dancing around their rooms to their music. And if I'm really in a good mood, and I usually am, I'll put on my camera and I'll dance around a little bit as well. And they love it. And it just gets everybody in great form for class because they have Zoom fatigue. So I'm, I've just gone away from the waiting room at the moment. But this is why I don't use the waiting room all the time on my classes. If kids have been doing six hours of Zoom classes, they have Zoom fatigue. The last thing you want to do is look at the screen, even for Taekwondo. And how you can get them away from that is get their blood circulating before you've even bowed in. Put on some fun music, dance around yourself in front of the camera. You know, they'll have a bit of crack. They'll all be dancing and it's, it's everyone's happy. And now you've got everybody revitalized for class. It's not going to be as much of an issue when they're all back at school, but if they're still doing homeschooling, it's a real issue. And if you've adults who are working from home and they're on a screen all day, they're fed up with Zoom as well. So just a bit of hopping around, acting, acting the, the fool. It is okay to get down in the mud and play a little bit with them. So the waiting room I find is the best for when I don't want anybody coming in because Zoom's security has massively improved. But you don't know that a well-meaning parent has passed the link on to a friend so that they can do a, a trial class without you knowing who the hell they are. You just don't know. The link is out there. You've given it to maybe 40, 50 students. Let's say it could get out. So just to make sure it's not breached, your class is about to start. You're looking. You know everybody is in that class. Activate the waiting room. It takes one click. Activate waiting room. Nobody's coming in in that class without you knowing who they are because their name will pop up and says that they're in the waiting room. And now you can choose to admit them or just leave them in the waiting room. That's your choice. For me, I use it as a security more, more than anything else. Um, oh, is that it? Almost. Yeah, so then the last thing then is uh, photos and videos. If you do take them, it's especially if there's a first name, you know, on screen, if it's a very identifiable, it, it does, it's no harm to just cover yourself, get permission, just ask the parents. And I, and I do this all the time. If you get one of your students to take a warm up, um, if they're under 18, like sometimes I'll get my high grades, even when they're teenagers, to take the warm up, but I won't include it in the recording without the parents' permission, because it's there for good. So, you know, this would only be with teenagers. And I, you know, I get all my uh, teenagers, once they get to kind of green belt and above, the apprenticeship towards black belt is beginning and they're going to start taking warm ups. But now that we're on Zoom and they're going to be recorded, just get the permission and then you don't have any issue after that. Okay. That is everything that myself and Master Manavaki and Mr. Ken Mars could think of including. But maybe you have, maybe we've come up with something and it's led to a question that we didn't anticipate. So go, give me a wave, Mr. Connery. Hi, Simon. First of all, thanks for meeting. Uh, I thought that was very interesting. I just have one small question regarding um, the spotlighting. So when you spotlight yourself as an instructor so your students can see you and you swap back to gallery view, they'll continue to see you spotlighted, but you'll see all of them. Is that? Correct. Okay. So then I, I know you were saying you're using a, a phone to record your classes, but if you're using the, the recording function on Zoom to record your classes, what then is recorded? Is it you spotlighted or yes. is it the gallery view? Okay. Only, only, only me. Okay. And what's interesting is, is that if you have a second device, yeah. it's not recorded. Oh, okay. Okay. So bear okay. that in mind if you are wanting to keep recordings going forward. And even when I'm teaching my classes now, I am conscious that I'm, I'm recording it and I want it to be a resource. So I have over 80 videos for my students now. Sure. Oh, Grandmaster Sanders did actually say I could 
make, give myself a plug. <laughs> I have, <laughs> that's reminding me, um, I just released, if you didn't know, um, a white belt course on Udemy. And if you'd like to check it out, it'd be great. Um, I think it's like 12 euro available at the moment, but there's 11 or 12 videos where I've really broken down the white belt syllabus. And I put it together really based on what I've learned from teaching on Zoom and how students can actually learn. Now, let's face it, we're all, most of us are around long enough. We, we have VHS tips. I learned off VHS tips. So nowadays, kids are especially, they're spoiled rotten videos. Clip forward, clip back, second at a time. Do you remember remote controls trying to go back 10 seconds on the videotape? Oh my God. So, but, you know, we can make the learning experience even better for them. So, um, yeah, it'd be great if everybody would, would check that out and, and maybe leave a review. It would be appreciated. Um, but I've over 80 videos now available for my students all on my YouTube. And rather than having to try and find 80 links, I created about five playlists. So they only have to save the link to the playlist and the videos are up, you know, they're uploaded every two days or so. And the lists are automatically updated then. Sure. So if you, if you are recording and keeping stuff on YouTube, uh, they're not listed publicly, by the way. So only my okay. students can find them. So okay. is that cool? Yes, perfect. Thank you very much, sir. Perfect. I got a little bit away. So if you are using side camera views, that's what led me away. Um, only the main screen that you have, your laptop, that's, that's what's going to be recorded going forward. It's a great question. Anything else? We're, we're done if there's no questions, I think. So <laughs> I'm here as long as you need me. No, uh, what I might do is, Master uh, Grandma Sanders, would it be, would you like to just maybe add a few words or if you're able to get your sound on there? Hello. Hello, Everybody sir. Is? Yeah, we can all hear you. Have any feedback? Yes, well, as you can see, uh, my chauffeur is driving me now <laughs> to the next meeting. So uh, I have to go in two minutes, but you know, it's, it was awesome. It was uh, a lot of information, a lot of good things. I use Zoom for a while now but I never got into all these, uh, these, these features. So it's very, uh, yeah, very good, very good Zoom meeting, I think. Uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's how you say it in English. I have to translate a lot of things to learn and to try. And, and I, I always use, I use uh, iMac and, and uh, so uh, Apple computers. So that's a little different. Uh, on my phone, you cannot do everything. So, uh, but basically very good uh, Zoom meeting. Uh, very well done. Thank you very much. And everybody, I hope to uh, see you soon on the next Zoom meeting because there will be a lot of Zoom meetings the coming months, I think. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you for that, sir. One thing that I've just thought of, if you are going to... Now, you're going to make mistakes. If you try these features, things are going to go wrong. I guarantee it. That's life. That's life. And we're all used to learning new things and making mistakes. Um, one thing I can help you avoid is... If you have multiple devices uh, all connected to the meeting, don't connect your audio to the meeting because you'll get feedback. All right. And you'll deafen everybody. So if you have your laptop, good. That's what you're using. Your microphone is connected to your laptop. And then you connect your phone. It'll ask you, do you want to connect your audio? Stay canceled. Don't, don't connect the audio on the phone. You, you don't need two, two microphones picking you up or you will actually get a feedback loop. Now there's an exception, and I discovered this. If you're using a breakout room and you decide to use your second device as the teaching tool in the breakout room. So let me give you the, the uh, scenario. Myself and Ms. Connolly are both in the Dojang. And what happens is, is that I've been using two angles for most of the class. And I said, okay, let's do a breakout room. So what I did was, I, uh, I, when I set up the breakout room, I added my second device, which was just named side view. I added that to the breakout room and I opened the rooms. And I, then I was able to pass the phone over to Ms. Connolly. Now it is safe for her to turn on the audio on the phone once she's in the breakout room because you don't get the feedback loop then, okay? So there's a tip for you. Okay, see, made that mistake. Deafened everybody by letting her turn on the audio on the phone before 
the breakout room was opened. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so there you go. Um, that's it for today, I think. We've covered everything I could think of covering. It's, it's all about making it a better experience and a safer experience. And you can have a lot of fun with it and you can make it really easy for your students if you, if you use these features and practice them at home. Just try them out because it, you know, you might as well make your mistakes before you go to class if you can at all. Okay, so before uh, Grandmaster Anis is about to leave, let's just uh, show respect. Chiriat. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday, everybody. I will email out the Dropbox link to everybody so you can access all the easier pleasure. Bye-bye. Thank you.